Hi YouTube. I thought I would show you the two <clears throat> primary types of e-bike that you can build from kits. Um, I have one of each, both a hub drive motor, which is this bike. This is the one I've showed you in the video that has the trailer hookup. This doesn't have the trailer right now, obviously, but uh, the hub motors are basically either front wheel or rear wheel. And you can see videos on YouTube on how to put those together. Uh, to me, the hub motors work fine. Uh, this particular one is a thousand watt motor. This thing has tons of power. Again, I've shown you the video where I can haul 285 pounds myself and all the groceries with this bike. No trouble at all. 21 amp hour battery. I showed you the real life results where uh, a 32 mile trip pulling that trailer with loaded with groceries and myself again roughly 265 pounds 32 miles on that trip and I used barely half that battery pack 21 amp hour battery 48 volt system and if you're serious about power and range 48 volt is a I think uh, just from my experience is the best way to go I had a 36 volt bike once that was the very first bike I ever bought and it was nice, but it just didn't have the power. And uh, the 48 volt systems give you both speed and power. And I think if you're serious about using an e-bike as your main transportation, you'd probably be, I wouldn't go less than 48 volts. That's gonna give you 20, 25 mile an hour type performance and with plenty of power. And again, the range is basically dependent on both the size of your battery pack and how you ride. I personally, I don't even put throttles on my bikes because I like the exercise and uh, pedal assist gives me plenty of power. You do just have to be paying attention as you ride. Just you downshift when you're coming up to a stop just like you would if you were driving a car because you don't want to come to a dead stop and then start out in a high gear. You're just asking for trouble that way. So you do have to pay attention, be aware and downshift uh, accordingly. That's going to give you the best performance that you can as you're riding. So that's the, the hub drive motor. The second type of motors that you're going to find are these mid drives. And the mid drives are a lot cleaner install. You can see this is the Bufang BBSO2, which is 750 watts. And this motor is really fast and zippy. <clears throat> Both of these bikes, this is a thousand watt, this is 750 watt. I can do 20, 25 miles an hour on either of these bikes just fine. I use this bike with the hub motor for my, basically all I ever do is haul gear with it and uh, I can also use it. I mean, if I don't have the trailer, this bike is also really fast and, and my range would increase probably maybe up to 70 miles with this battery pack. Um, again, a lot of it's going to depend on how conscientious you are when you ride and paying attention when you start out from stops and things like that. But another thing, I think you almost really need to have a rack and panniers on your bike if you're going to make it truly effective. Any good size pannier, you know, this, this can carry pretty much a standard size bag of groceries. So I can go to this grocery store, uh, bring back a couple of bags of groceries. Um, <clears throat> this mid-drive bike has a 17 and a half amp hour battery. This one is pre-made and it has a lock over here so I can pop this battery pack off and take it in indoors, which I typically do in the winter time because you don't want to leave your batteries out in the cold. Uh, it deteriorates their performance, plus you don't want to charge a bike ever under 32 degrees. It will ruin your battery. So, I've shown you in a previous video, it's just worth your while to add these connectors just so you can swap batteries around and um, if you... Excuse me, my sound went out for a minute. <clears throat> so, what else can I show you? Uh, I'm old and I don't like to, be, to bend over, <laughs> so both of my bikes have these riser uh, scenarios here. This bike 
is a, I actually use a 7 inch BMX bar here, which has an added benefit if it's got this support beam running across, which is, is a great platform for your lights and your um, control panel here. So, <clears throat> if I had to choose between the two, I don't know, it'd be a, it'd be a hard choice. If this bike is lighter and really zippy and fun to ride, they both are fun to ride, this bike is super powerful. Uh, I'm fortunate that I have this shed, which again, I showed you a video on how to build that, so I can have two bikes easily, plus my trailer in there. So, for, you know, roughly 400 bucks to build that shed, it's a great way to keep your bikes just out of the weather and I'll, again when I'm ready to go somewhere I just pop up in my shed, hop on a bike and I'm gone. So <clears throat> uh, cost wise this bike, I already had this bike all I did was use this front hub kit which I bought on eBay for 180 bucks it cost me about $500 to build the battery so I essentially converted this bike to an e-bike for $700. And again, with this 21 amp hour battery, I've got easily 50, probably closer to 60 or 70 miles of range. Uh, charge it for free from my solar setup. This bike I built from scratch. I bought everything on this bike separately. I bought the frame, I bought the wheel set, I bought the motor kit, I bought the battery. And uh, I just put this whole thing together. And my total cost for this, since I did buy all new parts and everything else, all my new parts included the rear cassette, the derailleur. I mean, I put it, everything. This bike cost me 1500 with the 17 amp hour battery. But it looks great. I mean, to me, that's a really cool looking bike. Clean lines, cost me much, much less than it would if I bought a custom built bike with a mid-drive motor. A lot of them have those Bosch mid-drives built in and they look nice but they're five thousand dollars so this is a very cost-effective option that still gives you a super cool looking bike. I like to add fenders on all mine. It just keeps things cleaner. It keeps dirt from kicking up into your chain and of course if you ever get into wet weather that uh, prevents water from slopping all over you. So that's just kind of an overview of the two different types of bikes. Another thing I like, just uh, especially if you're going any sort of distance at all, these ergonomic grips make a huge difference in your comfort level. Uh, it's just much, so much nicer than just those straight round ones. And once you adjust them to the proper angle, it fits your hand really well. It's comfortable. And I also like to always add these bar ends. That gives you a couple of different hand positions. These carbon contoured bar ends are super comfortable. They just fit your hands really well. You can kind of put your thumb up there as a, again just to make things more comfortable. But between the two hand positions you can really go long distances uh, without getting that numb hand aspect. So I do that on all my bikes. I do these riser bars on all my bikes. And it just gives you a really nice comfortable riding position for I mean, again, I did a 32-mile round trip yesterday. I was on this bike for two hours. And, you know, my hands never got tired, just again, because I could, ch I could change the position. So those are, I certainly highly recommend that. Mirrors are always a good idea, just because you, uh, you like to be able to see what's going on behind you. So these are those mountain miracles, which are wonderful mirrors. I found, I actually saw this tip somewhere on a review, Typically these things will be, these mirrors will be up and out, which just creates a problem. You're going to, those break really easily when they're sticking way out like that. But if you put them down and under, you, you have, it's a much clearer uh, line to your handlebar. So if you happen to bump this into something, <clears throat> it's not going to break your mirror off. You just, you might hit this outside piece, but the main body of your mirror is underneath. And again, you just have to adjust them properly, but as you're riding, you can just look down and see you know, really clearly what's behind you. So those mirrors are very handy to have, and if you install them that direction, you'll, I guarantee you'll be glad you did because you're not going to have a broken mirror two weeks down the road. So, again, just an overview, but 
So 1500 for this bike, 800 for that, and that's $2,300 I've got invested in two bikes. Super, super fun bikes, super range bikes. I spent a maximum of 500 to put this shed together. So now I'm up to $2,800. I bought the solar panel kit, which included the controller here. That cost me 150 bucks, so that's 2950. Trailer setup, since I modified it, that cost me probably 300 dollars for the trailer. So that's 3250. And then I bought this inverter and solar panel, the solar batteries. The total for those were 400 bucks. So 3,600 dollars roughly for this whole setup. Uh, <clears throat> which is less than you'd pay for a decent used car. I actually had a car. I had a Honda Fit. I sold it for 10,000 bucks. I bought it new, never drove it, sold it for 10,000 bucks, used less than 4,000 to, to do my e-bikes ecosystem here. And that was four years ago. And since that time, I literally have not spent a nickel on transportation. I mean, I've charged these bikes for free with my solar operation. The batteries typically are good for 800 cycles, so I'm not even halfway through the battery life on, on these yet. Uh, I get to the grocery store, I get to the doctor, I go to the dentist, I get to work, everything on these bikes. A uh, lot of fun, and it saves you tons of parking hassles because you don't have to worry about you know searching, the, scouring the lot for a parking space. You just pull up to wherever you are, lock your bike. Oh, by the way, bike locks. What I do with mine, <clears throat> I have found <clears throat> that these seven foot kryptonite bike cables are really nice. I mean, again, Bike Thief, if a bike thief is determined and they've got bolt cutters, you know they could they could cut through one of these. But these are really thick, beefy cables, and these are seven feet in length and they're super flexible. So you can wrap it through. <clears throat> that seven feet gives you plenty of length to wrap through both wheels <clears throat> and around any you know bike posts that you that you come across. I mean, you can put this on a parking sign post. Anyway, you've got a post, you can lock your bike up. And I personally like these on guard Mastiff locks. These are really beefy, thick locks, which, <clears throat> again, I would never leave this bike outside unattended overnight or something like that. I keep them locked up in my bike shed, <clears throat> which, you know, I guess if someone was determined, they could break into my shed and steal the bikes. But that's just a risk you take having any sort of transportation. Someone can steal your car or. But uh, <clears throat> I use that same bike cable on both bikes, and it's worked really well for me. I, I've been, you know, to the grocery store and Costco and places like that dozens and dozens of times, and never had any problem at all. But again, I would not want to leave one of these unattended overnight, just locked up with those cables. It's just an invitation for it to get stolen. So, oh, one last thing that I would point out is one of the things to th always think about with any bike, and especially these e-bikes, is flat tires. So what I use on all my bikes, both of these have the Schwalb Marathon Plus tire. Those are about the most thorn-resistant tires on the market. Um, and this is a 1.75 inch which gives you, it's a nice width, it's, it's a nice, it cushions your ride some with a wider tire. This bike is one and a half inch tires, which uh, again, the Schwab Marathon Plus, both of them, but I have never had a flat using these Marathon Plus tires, because if you do have a flat, particularly with these hub drive motors, since it's got the cable connected, and you'd have to unbolt this, which requires like a 21 inch uh, metric wrench to take the tire loose and then you're gonna have to fight this cable so a flat tire could definitely be a, a real problem um, so but with the Schwalbe Marathon Plus tires I have never had a flat not to say that you can't have one but uh, I highly recommend those tires for my trailer I uh, use those really 
thick thorn proof inner tubes and again all the all the trips I've made with that trailer I haven't had a flat so <clears throat> that is uh, I think a really good suggestion just a standard tire uh, you, uh, you almost guarantee you're going to have a flat at some point because that's just the nature of, <laughs> of of biking but these Marathon Plus are just really superb plus they have really long tread life and uh, you, you really can't go wrong with them. Okay, so that is kind of an overview of, of the two primary types of kits that you can use to build your own bike. And, of course, any pre-made bike you buy is also going to have the same thing. They're either going to have a hub motor or one of these mid-drive motors built in. So if I could only have one bike, I would probably do the mid-drive motor and... I would go with the Bafang BBS HD, which is a, a heavier duty motor, and that way you could still add the trailer capability. I don't think I'd feel comfortable pulling my big trailer with just this smaller Bafang. It's a great commuter motor. Again, it's very fast and zippy. <clears throat> I tried one of the BBS HD motors once, and to me, it was just, it was sluggish. It was just it was it was slower. It was heavier. They're about three pounds heavier, and I just felt like I really liked the performance of this BBS O2 better. So I sold that SHD motor since I already had this bike, the the bike with the thousand watt front hub motor there. So, but if I only had one bike, I would probably go with that SHD because it would be powerful enough to feel comfortable pulling my trailer and things. Uh, these hub drive motors are direct drive, which means there's no gearing inside. It's all basically driven from magnetics, which makes them pretty reliable. Uh, the Bafang motors and, and the smaller hub drive motors all have nylon gearing inside, so if you ever get yourself in a really uh, steep situation or pulling a big load and <clears throat> you can burn them out. You, I've, I've, I've heard stories of those nylon gears stripping out so <clears throat> I feel perfectly fine just riding this bike uh, for my commute and it got plenty of power to go up big hills but I would not want to carry a huge load with this because I would feel the possibility of stripping those nylon gears w would be there that does not happen with these direct drive motors because there's no gears to strip. So, okay, I guess that's it. Hopefully it was reasonably made some sense what I just told you about. And happy e-biking.